Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Boris Johnson. In the news this week, as the British team begin their training for the Olympics, the designer of their revolutionary new canoe accepts that bow buoyancy may still be an issue. At the Chartered Accountants Annual Conference, opinion is divided as to whether capital allowances may be carried forward if the date of the VAT quarter has already been changed within the current fiscal year. <laughs> <laughs> and at the British Conquer Championships, there are accusations of steroid abuse. On Ian's team tonight, a Newsnight presenter whose entry in the BBC website reveals she can speak French and crap Mandarin. <laughs> That's a hell of an act, you have to admit. Uh, please welcome <laughs> Emily Maitlitz. <laughs> and with Paul Merton tonight is a comedian who says she has never watched anything she's done on television. Uh, no, no, neither have I. Um, <laughs> watch, watch. Watch anything I've done on television, I meant to say. I'm sorry, that did, that did, not, that did not come out right. Sue <laughs> Perkins. <laughs> and we start with round one, Ian and Emily. Oh, well, this is our great leader. And this is his tennis partner, Lord Levy. <laughs> Could it be two hours of questioning after an anonymous tip-off from a well, neighbour from Downing Street? <laughs> That's right. This chap, uh, Assistant Commissioner Yates, went in, had a cup of tea, came out, Lord Yates. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. It's about, the, it's about the cash for peerages. It is. It's and shocking. It is shocking. It is shocking. I mean, shocking. it's certainly not something you lot would do. I'm not aware of the David Cameron. You're not aware of anything, <laughs> Martin. <laughs> I think it's a bit early for you to start it on me on this yeah. show. In. Yeah. I think, I think it's steady on. Yeah. Save yeah. it for later. Yeah. <laughs> the police wanted to interview Mr Blair for a very long time, but they chose the same time as Lord Stevens announced his inquiry into Diana. So what you're suggesting, Ian, is there's something fishy about the timing of the interrogation? I'm suggesting that this government's very good at burying bad news, so that if the coppers have come round to feel your collar, it helps if Diana's on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> Who wasn't in the room with him? Lots of people. Um, Bella right. Enberg wasn't there. No, right. Bella Enberg wasn't there. Sally Gunnell wasn't there. Jordan wasn't there. Jordan wasn't there. Jordan Jordan wasn't there. Isabel yeah. Kingdabunel wasn't there. Norman Wisdom. 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 Is it? Yes. Why? Well, it means he's not about to be charged. And, and uh, Adam Bolton was saying that it was a great uh, step forward. And anyway, that's his point of view. And, and, and you know, who, who could... Who could, uh... who, could, who could finish a sentence? No. <laughs> <laughs> who, could, who, could, who could possibly... Who could finish dissent? a sentence? Who? Who could possibly dissent from what yeah. Adam Bolton has said? Do you not also think, by the way, yeah. Yeah. that it's a little bit rum that on this very day that Blair is being interrogated for selling cash or selling peerages, yeah. yes. they put out the news about uh, the tornado deal. It is very, Good very Lord. smelly indeed. Do a tornado the, for the, Just the, shake your head around. Yeah, the tornado is a type of plane. <laughs> oh, thanks for doing that. <laughs> I wouldn't know what you were talking well, no, about if you hadn't done Sue that. Was do, Sue I was thought doing you meant the West London tornado. Sue was doing an impersonation of a meteorological phenomenon. I, the point that it is to do, it is to do the point at issue... You were doing an aeronautical phenomenon, which I is much, much more I was doing an aeronautical phenomenon, sensible. and this relates to the huge Al Yamama deal with the Saudis. Yeah. And the Saudis right. said... I mean, there's a, a probe into whether the Saudi um, deal was corrupt with BAE, and... Um, the Saudis said, you've got to stop this. You can't call us, you know, corrupt. You can't suggest we don't behave well, or we'll drop the whole deal and go off and do one with the French. <laughs> and they've dropped it. Lord Goldsmith, who wasn't there defending um, the Prime Minister because he's got other things to do, has said uh, it's not in the national interest. And I think, anyway, and it seems to be the view of the committee that it's very, very odd that on this particular day, two very embarrassing stories have been submerged in the inquiry into... Um, the death of the princess. Into well, these things. The, the yeah. death of the princess as well. Oh. So, your well conclusion done. is vote conservative. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to save that one up. <laughs> I think you should get <laughs> it out now while they're friendly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, this is the news that the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the Right Honourable Tony Blair MP, has finally been questioned by the police in the course of the Cash for Honours investigation. Sky News summed up Tony Blair's behaviour in the Cash for Honours scandal by saying it was embarrassing but not illegal. 
which will make a good slogan for the next election campaign. <laughs> Vote New Labour. We're embarrassing, but not illegal. <laughs> Paul and Sue, here is yours. Uh huh. Okay. Ah, uh, the princes. Yes. Uh, this is the man who's investigating the uh, murder of Princess Diana. There is the man who thinks Prince Philip's responsible. Yeah, there he is. There's the killer. Evil, murdering man. <laughs> So they've decided to hold this inquest after ten years and to discover that Princess Diana was murdered by Prince Philip. Yes. <laughs> Almost. <Yeah>. Almost. <laughs> Almost wholly wrong. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, nine years and four million pounds and nine hundred pages telling us that Diana actually had a car accident, whereas before the four million pounds and the nine hundred pages and the nine years, we all thought that she'd had a car accident. <laughs> Um, essentially, the only person who believed it wasn't was fired, yeah. and he spent nine years coming up with this amazing tissue of drivel yeah. um, to explain yeah. the fact that one of his drunken employees killed um, yeah. the late Princess of Wales. <laughs> but I mean, it's not as if the royal family haven't had some previous history in this sort of thing. Lady Jane Grey, Princess of the Tower, do you know what I mean? No, no, yeah. no okay, no, yeah. well, we've just dismissed. We've just dismissed any suggestion that the royal family was involved. I think Prince Philip killed her. There yeah. was, there was... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I th there was one other conclusion in Lord Stevens' yeah. report. Yes, Prince Philip did it. That was, no, <laughs> no, that was not widely followed up in this morning's papers. Lord Stevens blamed the paparazzi. Yes, uh, the, what happened the foreign paparazzi who, when the car crashed, they didn't help her, they just took pictures of her. They did. They did. They did. Very nice. did. Lord Stevens, would he have got that honour from the royal family? Kirk Welpington. Kirk Welpington, exactly where I did it. Lord Stevens, would he have got that honour from the royal family? And what is that? What, and you, you, and Sue, you Lord just, Stevens, uh, would he have got that honour from the royal family? <laughs> I knew I saw a Harrods hamper <laughs> in your dressing room. <laughs> He's doing another inquiry, doing... Lord Stevens, no, into no, no, where no, the no, bears no. shit in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> uh... The good news is that the princes are arranging a party. Elton John's going to be performing. Uh, now, Prince Harry, what is Prince Harry like? Deutschland <laughs> Uberales. <laughs> is it really cool? <laughs> 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 He's got the outfit. Selection of marching songs no, 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 on his no. iPod. <laughs> You know, I don't think there's enough respect for the royal family on this Songs programme so far. Poland. I really don't. Uh, I, I well, really how can you respect the band of murderers? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Wills and Harry have absolutely no interest in marching songs. They like soul songstress Joss Stone and a chap called Farrell. He's a hip-hop master mixer. <laughs> and uh, according to the Times... Your shoulders move when you said hip-hop. <laughs> That's what it meant to do, isn't it? Yeah. Well, hip hop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> according to the Times, according to the Times, Farrell has been collaborating with Britney Spears, <laughs> Justin Timberlake, and Snoop Dogg. You know they get you to read these out just to make yeah. you sound silly. You know. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pact of steel, and who cares? I want something positive about the royal family this week. What was the great achievement by the royal family? The positive achievement oh, by the royal Zara. family. This... Thank you. She won uh, BBC uh, Sports. Sports Personality of the Year. Brilliant. And uh, would you like to hear her acceptance? Yes, please. Love it. It's amazing. Uh, thank you to all the voters, um, and it's just amazing to be here um, with all these amazing sports people. <laughs> but to win this is, is absolutely amazing. And this is the long-awaited report into the death of Princess Diana. Commenting on the role of the French security services, <laughs> a spokesman for the Metropolitan Police said... Can I say said, the word seamless comes to mind? <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Commenting on the role of the French security services, a spokesman for the Metropolitan Police said, if we'd been in charge, Diana wouldn't have died. Unless, of course, <laughs> she'd tried to jump the ticket barrier at a London underground station. <laughs> the Diana Memorial Concert is set to take place on July 1st next year at Wembley Stadium and will feature Duran Duran, Brian Ferry, and 68 Polish builders desperately trying to finish the roof. <laughs> <laughs> the death of Princess Diana was one of those defining moments in history. We all remember where we were when we heard the news. Well, apart from the Bishop of Southwark. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two. And as it's almost Christmas, it's the usual picture spin quiz. Fingers on buzzers. This is the Bishop of Southwark, and he uh, didn't make it back from a drinks party in one piece. He uh, found himself in a Mercedes throwing toys out of it the other side of Lambeth Bridge. <laughs> when somebody stopped him and said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm the Bishop of Southwark, that's what I do. 
it is what he does in the sense that drinking and talking to make believe characters is something he'd normally be doing in church. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I take some of the responsibility. Party. I think I was the last person he talked to at that party. Were you the one at that the Irish stuff into his uh, alcohol <laughs> box? Rohypnol. Was it Rohypnol? <laughs> 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 did you, did you get give, it, did you give the bishop Rohypnol? Did you? Did you? Did you? Just say yes. It doesn't matter. Did you? Yes. Yes. At the start of the conversation. <laughs> well, there's a story. What was he taking a few drinks? I couldn't possibly say. Was he hoisting it away, Emily? I couldn't on. possibly say. Was he knocking it back? I couldn't possibly say. <laughs> was he as pissed as a bishop? Did he have flecks of vomit around his <laughs> mouth? <laughs> was his mitre set at a jaunty angle? Yeah. <laughs> hey, can, can anyone remember what cathedral spokeswoman Wendy Robbins said, according to the Express? He's always pissed. <laughs> he should be sacked. <laughs> Part of any bishop's role is to be out in the community. <laughs> so what he has done on this night was nothing unusual. <laughs> and how has the Dean of Southwark, Colin Slee... Slee? Slee. Slee. Defended the bishop. He said, get on with it, he was a bishop, it's Christmas. And actually, in the Christian spirit, we all make mistakes yes. and we ask repentance and we get on with it. The Irish whiskey out. features yes. heavily in the yeah, New yeah, Testament. Yeah. The <laughs> After walking on the water, didn't Jesus say, I'm Jesus Christ, that's what I do? <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what uh, Colin Slee said was, I wonder if we are looking at a cerebral phase, a sort of mini stroke. <laughs> no, Colin Slee, I don't think we are. <laughs> Where is the Bishop of Southwark a regular? Spearmint Rhino. Nope. <laughs> or on the door. On the pole. On the pole. <laughs> He's round it. He works that greased crook, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Not often you hear that sentence these days. <laughs> Description of Lord Archer. Indeed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he is a regular on today's Thought for the Day on Radio 4. And I wonder what his Thought for the Day was uh, the following morning. You're my best friend, you are. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at my bird. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to him after he got out of the car? Yeah, after, he walked after, in... after he'd had chucked the... Do you want to happen to him? Yeah, didn't he walk into a railway arch? He walked into an arch. And what did he become? An archbishop. Archbishop. <laughs> This is the Bishop of Southwark. Asked why he was found in the back seat of a stranger's Mercedes throwing children's toys around, he explained, I'm the Bishop of Southwark. It's what I do. <laughs> he was then struck by a thunderbolt accompanied by a booming voice saying, I'm God. It's what I do. <laughs> Church critics demanded that the Bishop show repentance. And indeed, the next day, a deeply contrite Bishop of Southwark got down on his knees for several hours talking to God on the big white telephone. <laughs> Friends say that the Bishop of Southwark has learned from his mistake. Next time he finds himself in a similar situation, he'll say he's the Bishop of Salisbury. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Well, she's upside down now. I've really sort of made a terrible mistake. Can't we spin it round? Can we say yeah, No, like... you buzzed in. You do it upside down. All right. Can we buzz? <laughs> Something to do with France. She's called Louise Clark. She's from Bristol. Oh, I know what's happened to her. She's suffering from a, a very rare disease called Suzak syndrome. Brilliant. That makes her think she's French. <laughs> Absolutely right. So she goes to the doctor and he says, You're very, very ill. And she goes, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. Do you, know the, do you know the proper medical term for, for Suzak syndrome? Retinocochlear cerebral vasculopathy. She rang her friends to invite them to stay with her in Paris, even though she lives in Bristol. Sounds a perfect idea. I could do that the whole time. What has she said in English about her condition? She said, you think it's jolly funny, but it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Louise Clark told reporters, it may sound funny to others, but waking up thinking you're French... <laughs> ..is a terrifying experience. <laughs> yes, and it happens to 60 million French people every morning. Jamais, as they say. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was quite good. I don't know, never, never, never mind that one. I like to. She disappeared. She disappeared. No, shush. Okay, no, shush. Pump, 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 p
This is the English woman who developed a rare neurological condition which caused her to believe she was French. Louise Clark from Bristol described the moment she realised something was badly wrong. I started gabbling away in French, so my sister took me to A&E. <laughs> or as she called it, A ah, et eh, I mean, she must have thought she was in France if she thought there was an A&E open. <laughs> in this, in Blair's Britain, you know, it's a very fair point. Uh, <laughs> you know, you're right. You're right. Like, why what do you the pump, write? the pump! <laughs> The rare condition is known as Susac syndrome. Other sufferers <laughs> include Paris Hilton, who thinks she's a French hotel. <laughs> <laughs> round three is the odd one out round. Ian and Emily, the Queen, King Hiro of Syracuse, the Bishop of Southwark, <laughs> and the BBC Sheffield cleaner, as seen on Newsnight. The Sheffield cleaner was carrying a tray of mugs on her right head. on her head. During an interview that I did with Caroline Flint. Do you think we could see a clip of, of you interviewing Caroline Flint with the cleaner? You've got to watch very carefully the cleaner because she appears in the top left-hand corner, possibly the top right-hand corner. Um, people were saying that we wouldn't have a situation today where they would be able to present their accounts. They have presented their accounts. I understand that hasn't been reassured their investors and the banks have agreed to extend credit to them. Yes, they have made some messages. I understand that's through the requirement of another computer company. Well, that, that must mean that this is about headgear, because the bishop fell over and he got such a big bump um, <laughs> that he couldn't put his mitre on. Mm. I think the Queen had some problem putting her crown on because it didn't fit properly and had to be adjusted. And King Hiro of Syracuse, the gods punished him by he grew um, ass's ears, so he couldn't actually put his <laughs> crown on. Isn't that right? No. Uh, <laughs> No, no, sorry, I'm sorry, but we're, st we're having a sticklers for accuracy in this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, you're very, very... You're, 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 you're right about everything except the ass's ears. Uh -oh. Which is, sorry, the, the bill I really care about. Yeah. <laughs> the thing was that he thought that he was being gypped by his goldsmith, yeah? Ah. Uh -uh. uh, who was selling him a crown which had been adulterated with silver rather than just gold. Yeah. And do you know what he did? He got a famous scientist to work out whether or not there was both silver and gold in the crown. Who was it? And how was it Archimedes? It? Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> and did he put the crown in the bath and yes. say, you've been ripped off? <laughs> Sorry, did this happen this week? <laughs> <laughs> Who did you say was your one out? The cleaner in Sheffield. Why? Because she can actually she's put her hat on and the others couldn't. Cor correct. She had absolutely no trouble putting things <laughs> on her head. And uh, who knows why the Queen's had trouble putting things on her head? Uh, she's grown asses ears. <laughs> Outrageous. No, it's, it's because she has a bad back and it uh, makes it very difficult to wear the imperial crown. All Rings. the people that lost their Apart Christmas hampers would be, could be replaced if she sold that hat. Yes. It would be a gesture, wouldn't it? I just think yes. this is a gesture, wouldn't it, I do Boris? not think you're developing a serious sort of Republican streak here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, uh, they murdered uh, the, the, the Queen the of Hearts. Crown jewel, they, they, <laughs> they murdered the Queen of Hearts, Boris. What headwear yeah. does the Queen put on in private, according to Prince Harry? It's a baseball cap with I killed Diana written on the front of it. <laughs> None of this is going to be used. I sincerely hope that none of this will be used. Uh, uh, no, it, it, it's, it is a shower cap. It is indeed a shower cap. It has a, it has, the logo is Ain't Life a Bitch. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Queen wears that? <laughs> no, which is probably what she thinks after listening to you. Uh, <laughs> they've all had trouble with official headwear except the BBC cleaner scene on Newsnight. King Hiro of Syracuse first became suspicious of the quality of his new crime when he discovered that it came from Argos. <laughs> It's a very, very high, high quality yeah, joke, that. Yeah. <laughs> Paul and Sue, David Williams, a roast potato, Charles Bronson, and John Humphrey's great aunt. <laughs> let, let me give you a clue. It involves Nigella. Goose uh, fat. Goose fat, yes. yes. Potatoes goose are in them. Yeah. David Williams was in it. Yeah, probably you would get covered in goose fat when you swim, didn't you? you do that. Charles Bronson. Sometimes people escape from prison, don't they, by, by, by smearing themselves with goose fat and, and squeezing through the bars. Did he do that? <laughs> Does he use it on his moustache? Does he have a moustache? Well... <laughs> 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 I think uh, John Humphrey's grand great aunt, did you say? Did she use it against the cold? Yes, I think she rubbed it like did. Vicks on her chest. Yeah. Didn't John it? Humphrey's great aunt, as is absolutely true, as a child she used to be smeared as goose fat to keep warm. Yeah. Nice. So Charles Bronson's the other one out. Brilliant. Charles Bronson smeared himself with margarine in order to try to escape from prison. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he what, thought a he sandwich? 
<laughs> no, he's like, like, a, like, it's like, you know, like, like, a, like a greased piglet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know this is the most dangerous man in Britain that you've just called a greased piglet? <laughs> that was how Charles Bronson tried to escape from prison. And so he did not use goose fat, yes. unlike all the others. Well done. Yeah. Who was it? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well done, you. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Do you know what advice uh, experienced cross-channel swimmer Mike Reed had for David Williams? Keep swimming. It's pretty, pretty close. My advice to David is keep going forward, keep putting one hand in front of the other <laughs> until you get to the other side. <laughs> Top-notch mm. advice there. <laughs> and uh, uh, why did he do it, according to the Daily Express? He did it Charles for... Charity. Yeah. He said he wanted to put as much as he could into Sport Relief's kitty. I think she works in reception. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'll leave, I, I think they'll leave that one out. I, I, I hope they'll cut that one, because I don't think... I don't, I, I don't, I don't. Do you know what happened to Nigella Lawson's cookbook after she mentioned that she was... Uh... Sales of goose fat throughout the country have doubled. You can't... Actually, it's the other way around, isn't it? It's what happened to sales of goose fat. Yes. Well, <laughs> so, no, <laughs> they went sales up? of Nigella have... Sales <laughs> of Nigella... Anyway, never mind all that. Never mind. Goose... Uh, <laughs> I was trying to think of a way of bringing in my book. <laughs> Called, well, I, since he mentioned it, <laughs> <laughs> here it is. Yeah. Well, you, look at it. Even, yeah, you couldn't even have a copy. No, I didn't want a copy. I just wanted right. to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look up Princess Di in the index. <laughs> Very yeah, big exactly print, right. isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's tremendous. It's, <laughs> Can I just I, say, I genuinely, I've turned to a page, it said, as soon as I see Bertha's rear end backing okay. down towards <laughs> me... <laughs> 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 Never mind, you must listen, I don't want you to spoil it. I don't want you to spoil it This has been my first time in Sicily. I don't want you to... I don't want you to spoil I it used for the, to the local alcohol. The audience will want to find out about Bertha in their own good time, and I don't think, I don't think it would be Advanced right. Advancing upon me are the towering bay buttocks of the I, biggest I, horse so I've ever <laughs> seen. In a daze, I mount the right. stool. Okay. <laughs> I wish I was making this up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, you It looks a bit classy on the outside. Thank you. Nothing but Thank rancorous you. porn inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Disgusting. Yeah. Nigella Lawson recommends roasting potatoes in goose fat. The Sixth World Potato Awards took place this year in Idaho. Everyone who attends gets a potato clock. And by nine o'clock, they're out of the house and on their way to the awards. What? What? <laughs> Everybody who attends gets a potato clock. Gets a potato clock. Yeah, gets a potato clock. It's a It's a joke. A potato clock. Oh, one more time. Should we try that one again? No. <laughs> yeah, try, try it again. Try it again. <laughs> Everyone who attends gets a potato clock. Oh, better. Better. And when they've got their potato, when they've got a potato they clock. Their potato clock. When they've yes. got a potato clock, they yes. have breakfast, right? Okay, got it. Okay, on. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features the publication of the Lobster Institute, the Lobster Bulletin, which aims to enhance lobstering as an industry and a way of life. I get crustacean weekly. <laughs> which, unfortunately, That's is not a newspaper. Weird. Do you get crustacean? <laughs> How do you cook? Do you get it with him? <laughs> you go along no, with the joke's done, boys. It's move on. Over. The joke's done. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Move away, sir. Move away. Nothing to see. It's all over. Move away, sir. Very good. Three million bees, what? Pretend to be a policeman. They all get together in the shape of a man. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, sir. I believe you've got honey in the house. <laughs> <laughs> knock on the door. The ones no. with more confidence do the speaking. Yeah. No. Don't no. look at your watch in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> get a grip. It Come sets get... them around. We're see almost, you looking at the watch. We're almost there. Well, well, listen, I just think if we're, we're so nearly there, if we can just yes. limp over the finishing line. Great. <laughs> I'm talking about... What well, an not... inspirational leader you've been to. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be victorious. Yes. I, I, the think, I think that should help. be the next Tory slogan. Let's just <laughs> limp over the finish. <laughs> no, we are going to... <laughs> I don't care. I want you to know, Ian, I do not care by what means we get over the finishing line, provided we get over it first. So, does that include corruption? <laughs> <laughs> Three million bees... Can't be wrong. ..move into a couple's <laughs> kitchen. What, did they gazump someone else? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the story that millions of bees have had to be removed from a house in America. <laughs> Next, owls what upsets the neighbours? Uh, lobster nipple clamps. Yeah. <laughs> Clockwork lobster. Is this the guy who had an enormous tree that looked like... Uh, mm -hmm. penis. I've got a, a penis called... that looks like a tree. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> 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 it's 
to accelerate this. I think we need to accelerate this. Uh, uh, this well, is, before this, someone uh, does the bonsai yeah, this joke. Is, this, is, this is a prime. This is a prime. Oh, it's the bonsai. We meet again. <laughs> This is a proud 10 foot conifer. Alan Parkin has clipped a fir tree into a hum. Into a what? Into, into a, a hum. A hum. A this, hum. Is what, this is what we, we classical tapirists call it. It's called a hum. That is a hum. <laughs> That's, That's a, a knob. It's not like another hum. It, 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 it is a hum. Where's the testicles? In the letterbox? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> In the ancient world, in the ancient world, that was called a herm. It, it disappeared one night, but then the owner discovered it buried in next door's bush. It's outrageously, it's outrageously rude. Time. And finally, <laughs> what now available for lobsters? iPods, iPods, haircuts. <laughs> He's looking to see if it's right. I can't believe oh, it. Yeah. Is it? What is is it, it peerages? It is peerages. Is it... Ah, shell suits. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. I like it. I like it. The answer is apparently a health manual. <laughs> That's another, just silly. Another good one, Rule isn't it? number oh, one: hey. if you find the water you're in getting hotter. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are: Ian and Emily, you are the richly deserving winners on ten points. Paul and Sue, you have seven. Ring. Well done. Uh, on, on which note, <laughs> we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Emily Maitlis, Sue Perkins and Paul Merton, and I leave you with news that in central London, a practical joker makes good his escape before the extra strong laxative kicks in. <laughs> At the annual magician's conference, it's 1-0 to the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> and there's humiliation for one youngster as he's forced to put on the socks his aunt gave him for Christmas. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>